So in this video, I'm going to reply to your comments and your hot takes in the luxury watch market. So the first one is Rolex should seriously take a down payment on any watch you want and just bill you once it's ready rather than playing their weightless game. So Rolex, when I first started in the industry, used to actually take a deposit. So that was one way that some clients used to jump the queue a little bit more. So it would show your intent as a buyer, as a purchaser from Rolex. So that's definitely something they should do. But unfortunately, the AD games, as we all know, kind of manufactured, self-manufactured within the ADs, depending on the group and who you're buying from. So unfortunately, that's just not the way because for them, they can maximize more profits and obviously become more successful. So you are right. I hope they come back to the old days, but unfortunately, I don't see this for, for a good few years. Owning an expensive luxury watch and knowing nothing about it isn't a flex. Well, for me, you know, I don't see that this side of the desk. We have clients that buy expensive watches for many reasons. We have clients that buy inexpensive watches for many reasons. That doesn't mean that they have to know the knowledge of it. They might just like the particular look of that watch. They might have desired that watch for many years. Their family, friends, parents, brother might have had that watch. It could be a grail watch for them. So really, I actually don't agree with that. I do think that people should be able to buy what they want with their money if it's hard earned. And obviously it's down to them on what they are particularly like. They don't have to know the history. It's like buying an expensive car. Do you need to know the nuts and bolts of the car? Absolutely not. So yeah, don't agree with that. And obviously there's many buyers for many different watches. So the next one is prices are falling back to 2019, 20 levels. It's madness to buy a Rolex now. Again, don't agree with that. Obviously the prices are coming back with the pre-COVID prices. Mm, I just can't see it. I just think we've got all that way back to those prices. Some have settled still above that, even though they are still coming back in the market. I don't think it's madness to buy a Rolex. We have never been as busy as a company. We have never sold as many Rolex watches. It's a buyer's market. People are buying to wear. The investors have gone away from our market, gone into other commodities. For me, there's no better time to buy. It's definitely a buyer's market. So the next one is steel day toners to go down to 3K over list, wait for the recession to to hit. This is a massive topic. I could talk so long about this. I'm going to give you the short version. It will never happen. There will not be 3K over list. You know, 3K over list, we're talking 2016, 17 prices. It is never going to happen for the hardest watch to get out of Rolex, the Holy Grail, the GOAT, the 11 year waiting list, spend two or 300 grand to get that watch. Is it going to go back 3K over list? Absolutely never, ever, ever, ever. So you obviously wish it does for your own personal reasons to get that watch. But for me personally, you're talking about the most coveted watch ever in Rolex's lineup, and it is impossible. So the next one is, the trend hasn't changed. People have mortgages and bills to pay. Less money, mate. Do you live in the real world? So my answer to that is, you know, the trends have changed with regards when the bigger piece is due to the media and obviously safety. That's into the monthly market update. I think this view is actually mentioned, but the mortgage and bills, it's all relative to people's lives. So people who generally have to worry about mortgages and bills and sort of day-to-day hand-to-mouth living, do not generally buy a Rolex watch, an expensive watch, certainly not an expensive car, all these sorts of things. So it is all relative to the actual real world. And for me personally, you know, these things that you've mentioned there obviously do make people think about what they're gonna buy, but it does not affect our market. And for us, like I said before, we have never been as busy as a company. It's a buyer's market. And for me, I do live in the real world. I walked into an AD in Tenerife last week and tried my luck, got offered a biometal yacht master, but didn't take it as I don't like the model. However, do you think they are trying to offload that? Yes, they are. They are trying to offload watches. We're seeing a lot more watches in the window that are not exhibition only watches. They're actually for sale watches. I even had a client message me the other day. There was a steel and gold Daytona. I mean, as we all know, not an easy watch to get. Steel and yellow gold, white dial, one of my personal favorites, one of our really best sellers as well. Literally got in stock. One of my clients sent me a photo. It sat in an AD's window yesterday in Spain and he can go buy it at list price. So that does tell you we are seeing a lot more watches coming. That's quite an unusual case. Once we don't normally see those. Obviously there's a few more in Europe than we are seeing in the UK, but the trends are changing. The times are changing. The AD's are having to sell other watches they wouldn't normally give straight away or certainly put in the shop window. So yeah, they are trying the look follow our videos, follow our advice, and make sure that you do not get burned. One of the things you guys really do need to bear in mind is the white swing tag that comes with all Rolex models, a full set as we call it in the trade. It has the serial number on it, it has the model number, it has the most important 
dial code on it, which tells you it came with that dial. Any watch bought in Europe will not have that white swing tag as they like to keep it back. That does affect the value. We will not buy it, other deals may buy it, but for us personally, we sell full sets and we can categorize say every, every watch that we sell comes with the dial that we've actually sold with the dial because it has the dial code on the tag. So bear that in mind, buying from Europe, may look an appetizing deal. You might think, oh, you know what? I can buy this watch, pay for me holiday, you know, there's no white tag, I really don't care. I'll claim the VAT back at duties and airports. And by the time you get back, you've realized obviously you've claimed the VAT back, you've no white tag, and unfortunately, you know, you can't sell a watch. So Rolex is the best brand for gray market flippers like this guy, nothing more. Why do I want to pay 30K for a 13K retail watch when I can get a Breca or Constantine Vacheron for 20 to 30% off the retail? You've actually answered your own question there. The reason why, you pay 30 grand for a 13K retail watch from Rolex is because they are that hard to get. There's a waiting list, they're extremely sought after, and they carry a premium depending on the model more than RRP. If you're looking at a different brand like the ones you mentioned there, unfortunately, some brands have to offer a discount to sell their watches, including Amiga and other brands and Breitlings, and there's many other brands out there. And unfortunately for me, that undermines the brand. For me personally, if I'm buying a watch that I can get a discount on, for me, that tells me the RRP is too high on that watch. I want to buy a watch where they do not, no money off, there's no discount whatsoever. And for me, then I know that at least I've paid a fair market price and what I think is going to stay at that price or go down or go up a little bit. If you're buying something that's discounted, that tells me it's overpriced to start with. As far as I'm concerned, my money would be rather and better safe in the brand Rolex. What is your opinion about adding a third party strap to a Rolex, i.e. NATO or rubber? Explorer one to tone down a Rolester, etc. I actually think they're pretty cool depending on the brand. There's two main ones we know third party one is called Rubber B and the other is called Horus. You can quickly Google them, have a look online. I'm sure a lot of you guys know them already. They do have a different look. So if you're looking like sports, look a lot of our clients will have a bracelet watch, they want a summer watch to wear away. They don't have that many watches, so they'll just throw a rubber strap on it, something that they can actually do, and obviously enjoy it with a different look. I think it's a really good idea. These two particular brands are really good straps, actually, so if you want to check them out online, I'm sure that you'll be able to find out that they have a nice coloured strap for the look of your watch. And yeah, definitely for me personally, I think they are good and certainly something that you can do without selling your watch to give it a different look and hopefully, you know, enjoy it in the uh, summertime. Uh, this next one, so this one's saying, what do you mean you're not going to get a Wimbledon face? Surely if you put your name down and wait long enough, you will get the watch you have ordered, lol. They are not just gonna put your name on a list with a specific watch you want and just never ever call you ever, lol. Well, I have to disagree with that because we do get clients who literally have been on the waiting list for years, and I mean years and years and years and years, for what I would class as an entry level watch with a harder to get dial, and then just not getting the call. So we do see a lot of it, we hear a lot of it, we have got clients who tell us all this information, we've been in this industry for a long, long time, you know, and I'm telling you, I'm trying to give you guys out there the information that hopefully, you know, you can take away and we've seen a lot do it already and actually react to that and actually help them with their buyers from independent deals like us or their ADs and so on and so forth and choices that they're making so they're actually not getting ripped off or certainly not overpaying or choosing watches that they're going to lose money on. One of the reasons that you're not getting the Wimbledon dial as well is the fact that obviously, you know, you've not spent history with the AD, you've not spent any money with them. Unfortunately, you've nothing to go on. You probably won't buy another brand from them. You won't do their dance. You won't buy any earrings, diamonds, so on and so forth. But honestly, if you do everything that we teach you in the videos and all the information that we give you out there, if you follow some of that information or the majority of it, you will hopefully get the watch that you want. And for some watches like that, my answer to you is just go straight to the gray. Don't bother doing it. If that's what you really want, pay a little bit more and go and buy it the same day.